What's up everybody? Frank Valkyria, welcome to the channel and Happy New Year together. Happy, 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 new, year. happy, happy new Year. Forest. Happy New Year. Happy new year. And like. Happy New Year. Let's go. Since you liked very much our reaction of geography, also because we are dumb and in the hope that we'll get brighter as we go, as we explore the internet and YouTube, today we're doing another geography now. And also, please, geography now, don't take our video down. You can monetize it if you want. We love you very much. But we want to react. Eh? We are intellectuals. We're going to share our highest thoughts regarding what you do. Asta, asta, asta. Let's go. All right, our first South American country. This is the land of silver, kind of, not real. Can, am I the, am I recording, by the way? Ah, oh, that's uh, a very good question. I am recording. I'm just yes, dumb. Great, man. I'm just dumber than a goat. Scared. Hey, welcome to Argentina. It's time to learn geography now. We'll explain more about that <laughs> later. First, you know the drill. Let's talk about the flag. The Argentinian flag has equally long, tall, white, and blue stripes. And it's interesting because there technically isn't an official meaning to these colors. Many will say that it resembles the sky with the blue and the white clouds. However, many historians will tell you that it... So much creativity right there. It's colored that way to represent loyalty towards the House of Bourbon. In the center is the Sun of May emblem. Historians accredit this emblem to representing the Incan design of the sun god Inti. All right, that was fun. Now let's talk about Argentina's location and borders in political geography. Argentina is located on the bottom part of the South American continent, bordered by five other countries and the Atlantic to the east. It's well, also here, in like in the last ice age, 100%, all of this was exposed. Mm. Huh? Mm -hmm. Like for sure. Divided into 23 separate provinces and the autonomous capital city of Buenos Aires. Oh. Argentina's borders are pretty simple, except for that one island called Isla Martin Garcia that lies in Uruguayan waters and is kind of shared by both countries. Otherwise, many of Argentina's borders are actually just natural land barriers, such as the Andes Mountains in the west by Chile, and in the Misiones province, the Rio Parana, Iguazu, and San Antonio rivers, and the Uruguay River for Uruguay and Brazil. Which, by the way, gives Argentina a very distinguishable panhandle, kind of like Afghanistan that we studied a few weeks ago. You can even see it from space. Due to the fact that the land is less cultivated and thanks to natural river borders, it has a more lush green appearance that sticks out in contrast to its neighbor nations. But then you get the arbitrary subtle borders. Dude, I'm like so incredibly like, oh yes, oh yeah, very, oh, very good. Oh, I didn't know that. Wow. <laughs> green, awesome. Uh, and then we are saying anything and maybe it's better for once mm. in Black our life. Hills, kind of like the ones by Bolivia, sometimes marked boldly and sometimes virtually invisible. Where things get really complicated though is in the south, more specifically the furthest south. Tierra del Fuego, or the land of fire, which is pretty mm. ironic considering that... I actually crossed here with the ship right here. We went all the way down this and then we crossed close. I've seen the, the cape. Mm. I have a picture somewhere that you can see the cape in the back. But do we want to speak about the Tierra del Fuego? Like how awesome this name is, man! It's like Tierra del Fuego. Nice. I love that. It's true. It looks like almost like a, a territory in Lord of the Ring. Where are you Somewhere going? in Middle Earth, you know. Go past Tierra del Fuego, but watch out, huh? discovered the area in the 16th century. Anyway, it's the smallest province in all of Argentina, and it's actually an island that they share with Chile. And they kind of have like a who can claim the bottom of the world competition when it comes to this territory. On this island, Argentina has a population that far surpasses Chile's by about 19 times. And for a while, had the world's southernmost city, Ushuaia, established in 1884. However, Chile didn't back down from the fight, and in the 1950s, built a small little establishment just a few miles south across the Beagle Channel named Puerto Williams or Cabo de Hornos named after the Cape Horn and hence with a population slightly over 3,000 and even their own little airport Chile just barely beat Argentina in having the world's most southern town but where things get even more complicated are these islands right here but the question is who wants to live there eh? you can have the southest tip of the world but who wants to be there who yeah, it depends maybe it's super yeah. nice over yeah, there you know maybe it's also pretty cool, the old way down there, mm. because it's like basically as if you were probably Norway or something, mm. you know? 
Now, if you ask an Argentine, they'll tell you that it was freaking cold. It was the equinox of spring when I passed, which is October there. So serious about it that they even named an entire stadium and airport after the island. Totally freeze. Like the soccer claim that they have over the islands. If you ask a British person, they'll tell you that these islands are a collectivity of islands made up of the Falkland Islands in the west, South Georgia, and the South. English. Sandwich Islands, which was English the everywhere. Hawaiian Islands. Argentina claims that after gaining independence from Spain in 1816, the islands were given to them from the Spanish Empire, and the British came in in 1830 and forcibly pushed out the Argentines that had settled there and barred them from ever coming back. However, the British claim that they were the ones that discovered the islands in the 17th century, even though technically the French were the first ones to actually colonize the island. And either way, they have a permanent population of about 3,000 people that live on the islands that are British nationals that were born and raised on the islands. Eventually, tensions rose and they went to war over the islands in 1982. Long story short, the UK was able to fight off the Argentine troops and hold on to the islands, although Argentina still doesn't recognize the UK's sovereign claim. It's kind of funny though, because in 2009, former UK Prime Minister Gordon Brown actually met up with Argentine President Cristina Fernandez de Kirchner, and when it came to the Falkland Island thing, they just kind of awkwardly said they wouldn't talk about it. Well, that was a lot of information. Now let's mm. talk about what the land is. was. We didn't react <laughs> much on this information. Argentina is one of the most diverse countries in terms of landscape. In almost every corner, you see something that is completely different from the opposite corner that you were just at. In the north by Brazil and Paraguay, you can find rainforests and lush, humid tropic zones. In the interior and Midwest, you can find flat pampas and farmlands and hills. In the west by Chile, you find the mountains, with the highest point being Mount Aconcagua, which, by the way, is the highest mountain in all of South America. In the east, by the Atlantic, you can find nice coastal beaches. A little bit further south, you can find ranches and mineral mines. And a little bit These I like. This is like, like the mm -hmm. U.S. with those uh, canyons and stuff. They really looked awesome. Oh, the U.S. looks like Argentina. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Further south from that, you can find cold and chilly rocky oh, deserts see. and cacti in the Patagonia region and petrified wood forests such as the one in Ormachea. If you go even further south into the end of the Patagonia region... I'm not mistaken, there's a lot of excavation in those areas where they found a lot of uh, dinosaurs, stones and, you know, bones, you know, because of the sediments and, mm. the, you know, vast areas. Like the Argentinosaurus, I think, is also like the, 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 the biggest, biggest yeah. uh, land animal ever discovered. Uh, that thing was yeah. big. Thank God, it's not around anymore. No, but it, was, it wasn't that bad. I mean, they were probably going to no, stamp you to death. It was not like... It was a, herbivore. I think it was. Ah, like it's uh, like the other guy, but bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah but the super duper yeah. like sauropod, I think, maybe I'm mistaken. A gigantic um, like cow with a long neck. You can find glaciers and ice. This is the coldest part of Argentina. It's kind of interesting though because the south part of South America has what you would probably call a reverse double rain shadow effect in which wind currents cause the moisture to stay in the north part of Argentina making the north part of Chile a desert and the complete opposite in the south in which Argentina becomes a desert and Chile has a lush green interior. Kind of interesting how that happens. Funny story, Argentina was actually originally colonized because the settlers thought that the land would be rich in silver, hence where Argentina gets its name, the Latin word Argentum, which means silver. However, in a weird turn of events, Argentina was actually rich in almost every single mineral except silver. Zinc, copper, and lead can be found in various mines all over. However, Argentina is especially rich in boron, making Argentina the third largest boron producer in the world after Turkey and the US. Oh, I thought she was, I thought like, it's the biggest producer of borat. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> borat, hmm. I haven't bore on you yet with the... Okay, that was terrible. Let's just... Here's the demographics. Argentina has a population of about 41 million people, or roughly the same as the country of Sudan. The Argentines have a I thought actually Those less than... Uh, uh, I thought it was always around 30 million. 41 Meaning million. Meaning that Argentina oh. is almost completely completely and entirely a country of immigrants. Argentina can actually disputably be considered as the whitest country in all of South America. It's kind of hard to distinguish the specific percentages though, because many Argentine census reports don't really factor in race too often, but even the most conservative estimates put Argentina. Yeah, I think I saw Mercedes Sosa in that uh, picture somewhere right there. At somewhere around 85 to 95. Great musician. European. Believe it or not, about half of the Argentinian population is Italian or at least partial. Italian, yes, it's true. Well, I, we have a lot of. Uh, immigrated in the 19th almost anybody I know has a relative that lives yeah. in Argentina, mm -hmm. where we yeah. come from. Almost anyone. 
uh, myself already we have like friends from the same village where I come from plus people that went there like in my lifetime to go marry to girls that originally were from there so to continue the tradition of immigrants so there is yes it's true we can confirm that okay I had to say so. Very true. In the mother country and saw Argentina as a way to rebuild their life. Spanish, of course, plays into that mix as well. And about 17% of people identify as French and about 8% German, with the remaining European groups coming from a slew of countries like Norway, Sweden, the Netherlands, and so on. In fact, yes. interestingly enough, if you go to the Chubut province in the south, you can actually find a town of about 50,000 Welsh people called Ulladfa Gamra. A good portion of these people are actually fluent in Welsh, making Argentina one of the few places in the world where you can actually find a genuine Welsh community with wow. instituted facilities that speak Welsh as a... Oh, that's already uh, like unique. Uh, I never thought you would find that in Argentina. Remarkable. As a main language. Things get a little fuzzy though when it comes to the natives. Although people who identify as full-blooded Amerindian only make up about 2% of the population, about 9% of the population identify as mestizo, or mixed between Amerindian and European. However, a recent study by geneticist Daniel Korach has theorized that over half the entire population of Argentina probably has at least one ancestor that was Amerindian. Argentina actually used to have a surprisingly large black population, especially during the colonial days, and at one point during Spanish colonization, blacks actually made up a third of the entire population. However, after independence, wow. the population of blacks sharply declined due to a number of factors, such as epidemic anti-African legislation in the early years, and many of them emigrated to more African-friendly nations like Paraguay and Brazil. Today, they make up less than 1% of the entire population. However, they have definitely left their mark on Argentine culture with contributions to art and music, and arguably the inception of the tango. When it comes to culture, Argentina has a very defined and nationalistic approach to how they operate and view in life. They like to keep things classy, but in their own Argentinian way, distinct from the European way. The last thing an Argentinian would want to hear you say is, you are so Spanish. Argentina also has a huge wine culture, as they are the fifth largest producer of wine in the world. And they're very heavy on soccer, or football, and basketball, with an impressive amount of players already having been drafted in the NBA, such as my favorite, Andres Nocioni. Speaking of international trade-offs, let's talk about Argentina's friends. In order to understand how Argentina works diplomatically, you kind of have to understand its history. Since its independence, Argentina has gone through a lot of crazy times. To make things short, Argentina was part of the Spanish Empire as well as many of her neighbor nations. However, when an empire collapses, guess what happens? Internal conflict. In post-colonial... I mean, those eras, eh? between the French, the British, and the Spanish, they, f they freaking messed up half of the planet from Mexico down. <laughs> God mm. damn it. But anyway, now it's what it is, and the past is always bloody and shitty. That can be said almost basically for every country, for every empires mm -hmm. that man has ever created. And we can only get better from there forward. Sure, at the time, sure, this the, they were like very good at destroying other populations. You know, we oh. were we were good at that when the Romans were around. Yeah. Everybody was good at it in a certain period of time. But I think the fact that I, um, I don't remember where I saw this, but also the Spanish brought diseases mm -hmm. to the people there, but they also, the Spanish brought diseases which back, they didn't yeah. exist back, exactly. you know, <laughs> because they got it from there. So, but this is also the nature of globalization. It's just, it's just what it, it is. But anyway. Yeah. Uh, well, would have happened somehow. Many times, Argentina has had wars and battles with every single one of her neighbor nations, except for Uruguay. Today, oh. Argentina gets along pretty well with her siblings, even though she adopts different trade policies from many of them. Now, when it comes to Spain, Argentina definitely does not have post-colonial Stockholm syndrome. Now, granted, Argentines do love Spanish people, they just don't like the Spanish people. Antonio However, Banderas. However, when it comes to their best friends, Argentina would, might probably consider... Everybody Uruguay. loves cats. What is it? Puss with the boots? Boots? Could they Remember the the puss the cat with the boots in uh, Shrek. Mm. You never mm. saw Shrek. I think not. Come on. <laughs> sorry, man. I live under a rock. I'm sorry. Uruguay and Italy, their best friends. Uruguay very has a very good. similar demographic we like it. culture to the Argentines, and they have been very close for as long as their country's conceptions. 
Some might even argue that Uruguay is kind of like the cute little sidekick of Argentina. And of course, Italy is definitely a huge player in the Argentinian clique. Not only do over half of the people in Argentina identify with Italy ethnically, <laughs> but many of the major and most important companies in Argentina are Italian-based, such as Tequint, Iveco, Pirelli, and Tel. Oh, wow. In conclusion, Argentina might... We didn't know that. And another thing, you know what I hope? The only thing that I hope was in reverse was that from Argentina, they would have exported a little bit of rock into freaking Italy, mm. huh? Like some, some kind of too, soda stereo influence or Charlie Garcia or the good stuff that we never had, okay? The only people that, the only band that always comes to surface in Italy when you talk about rock and legend, whatever, it's always the one band. Premiata Forneria Marconi. That's it. <laughs> PFM, what was it? PFM. PFM. Bass. That's it. That's the end of the story. One band. I don't know how they come out. The rest. Ciao. Huh? Argentina. Next time, a little bit pushy pushy, a little bit more rock influence. We like it. Not exactly be the country of silver that it was originally thought to be, but the spirit of the people with their fierce culture and passion definitely make them look golden. Stay tuned. Armenia is coming up next. If you want to see it, we're going to go in Armenia as well. Okay. Very interesting, man. I like this geography. Yeah, this video was more videos. informative, but hmm. it didn't show a lot of uh, nature and other stuff. Perhaps we should do like uh, also geography in other ways. If you guys have uh, like a video like that of places from Argentina that you want us to react to, we're gonna do that exact also that. So leave a comment below or leave a link below, and also go check our cover. Uh, talking of rock, today we did you two. All I need is you. All I want is you. All I want. All I want is you, go check it out, show some love, love is good, makes you feel good, better, releases endorphin in your brain, gives you a sense of purpose, okay? And it's lovely too. <laughs> also very lovely. Ciao. Move.